in our previous work, we have seen where um, equivalent circuits can be derived where we can make and condense devices into less complicated circuits using the concept of equivalency. For example, when we had two resistors in series with each other, R1 and R2, we could replace those two resistors with a single equivalent resistance, REQ, which of course was equal to R1 plus R2. Similarly, if we had two resistors, R1 and R2, in parallel with each other, we could replace those with a single resistor, REQ, that was equal to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. So the idea with equivalency is that those two devices, in this case, those two devices can be replaced with a single equivalent device, and the rest of the circuit surrounding those two devices wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We don't affect the performance of the rest of the circuit by doing so. We're going to now see another way of simplifying circuits using what's known as source transformations. And what we want to demonstrate is that this combination of a voltage source in series with a source resistance can be replaced with an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source and a series res and a parallel resistance. And you'll notice that in both cases, the, si the value of this resistor here and the value of this resistor are the same here. And what we need to determine is, what is the relationship between this current source and this voltage source, so that in fact these two circuits are equivalent? Now in this case, what do we mean by equivalent? Equivalent means that from these connecting points, this terminal pair A to B, and this terminal pair A to B, something connected at these terminals will experience the same current voltage effects as something connected here. In other words, this resistor load resistance here, R sub L, would have the same voltage across it and the same current through it connected to this series voltage and resistance as it would experience over here connected to this current source and this source resistance in parallel with it. This is what we refer to as source transformations. To determine the relationship between V sub S and I sub S, let's go ahead and write expressions for, first of all, the current that this load resistance would experience in this circuit, and the current that this load resistance would experience in this circuit, and then set those two equal to each other and see what the relationship would be. Well, over here on the left-hand side, I sub L would simply be the voltage V sub S divided by R sub S plus R sub L. On this side, the current through the, through the load resistor can be determined using a current divider. I sub L then would equal I sub S times R sub S over R sub S plus R sub L. Setting these two expressions equal to each other, we have then V sub S over R sub S plus R sub L would equal I sub S R sub S over R sub S plus R sub L if V sub S equals I sub S times R sub S. You'll note that the denominators are the same in both of these, so for these two expressions to be equal to each other, then V sub S would equal I sub S times R sub S. Or, rearranging it, we could also write that I sub S, the current source voltage, or the current source here, would have a value equal to V sub S divided by R sub S. And when these conditions are met, then the current that this load resistor would feel in both the series circuit and the parallel circuit would be the same. Now, let's look at the voltage that those two would experience, or that that load resistance would experience in both situations. We can determine V sub L over here on the left using simply a voltage divider. V sub L then is equal to V sub S times R sub L over R sub S plus R sub L. Over here in the parallel case, we can determine the current or the voltage across this resistor 
by taking the current that we just calculated and multiplying it by r sub l. Or, over here on the right-hand side, we've got then v sub l is equal to i sub l, which was i sub s times r sub s over r sub s plus r sub l. So there's the current of the resistor, and multiply that by then r sub l to give us the voltage across the load resistance in the parallel circuit. Once again, to determine the, the relationship between V sub s and I sub s for these two voltages to be the same, let's set them equal to each other. We have then V sub s times R sub l over R sub s plus R sub l, setting that equal to this over here where we have um, I sub s, R sub s, I'm going to go ahead and bring the R sub L up into the numerator here over R sub S plus R sub L. Once again, the denominators are the same, and so for these two to be equivalent, the numerator here, V sub S, R sub L, must equal the numerator here, I sub S, R sub S, R sub L. And once again, we can see that if I sub S times R sub S is equal to V sub S, then these two voltage terms are equivalent. Again, saying that V sub S then equals I sub S, R sub S, which is exactly what we saw the, the relationship between V sub S and I sub S needed to be for the currents to be equal. And once again, we can rearrange it so that we get I sub S equals V sub S over R sub S. So the take home from this is that we can replace a voltage source and a series res resistance with a current source and a parallel resistance where the resistance values are the same and the relationship between the V sub S and the I sub S is defined by these relationships here. We'll show in the next video how that can be used to simplify more complicated circuits into less complicated circuits to facilitate our circuit analysis.